Let's talk to some folks who may end up voting on this. Uh, joining me now, uh, Congressman Doug Collins, Vice Chair of the House Republican Congress uh, Conference, and Congressman uh, Raja Krishnamurthy, uh, a Democrat from Illinois. Thank you both for joining us tonight. Uh, Congressman so uh, Krishnamurthy, I'll start with you. Uh, what do you make of where we are right now? You know, we've talked to many of your Republican colleagues who say um, you guys are closer than people would think, looking out um, from the inside out, uh, outside in, uh, from the public. Where do you think you are at this point? Well, thank you so much for having me, Shannon. I, I agree. I think that uh, we are close. I think it's time to govern. Enough of the re recriminations, uh, enough of the blame, ga bl blame game. Let's uh, come to an agreement. Um, I think that there was a deal on the table even last week uh, between Senator Graham and uh, Senator Durbin that had been negotiated among senators uh, generally. And unfortunately, that got derailed at a White House meeting. I think now it's time to step back from the brink. Let's go back to the table, negotiate something that all of us can agree on. Okay. In the meantime, uh, Congressman Collins, you are a member of the military. There is a lot of concern about what happens to military folks uh, as this plays out. They're one of the main groups, along with federal employees, who are subject to some real repercussions when these things kick in. Um, we're 42 minutes in now to this. I want to play what, uh, something that Defense Secretary uh, General Mattis had to say about how this plays out when it happens for the military. And that's going to impact our contracting. It'll Obviously, our medical facilities, uh, it's got a huge morale impact. Uh, I, I'll just tell you, how long can you keep good people around when something like this happens? It is always a question that's got to hover in the back of my mind. Um, the, I would just tell you that uh, we do a lot of intelligence operations around the world, and they cost money. Uh, those obviously would stop. And I, I would just tell you that uh, training for almost our entire reserve force will stop. I mean, those are some real world impacts, uh, Congressman Collins. Uh, how worried are you about the military impact, even if we get a short CR? Because people across the board tell us that's not good for the military either. No, it's not, Shannon. I think that's the issue that's bothering most of us here tonight. And, and what the, the conversation I'm having is really concerning again. And even my, my friend from Illinois, is, is my Democratic friends are saying, well, we want to deal with DACA, we want to get this deal, and then we'll deal with spending. Let's get back to dealing with the American issues that we have of spending on our military, spending on our readiness, spending on just regular functions of our government, and, and commit to finding a fix for DACA. But DACA is a separate issue. DACA is not even, if you would be ripe or proud right now, it is happening. We are are trying to get it fixed. The president's committed to it. But when you're dealing with real world families, when you're dealing with, with the issues of our government and staying open and doing the things that we're supposed to be doing, look, let's deal with those things that we're supposed to be doing. Because I, as a reservist, I know I've been getting texts all day from folks that I serve with and others saying, where are we headed? What are we doing? Am I going to get my training? This is the kind of concern, and a CR doesn't do it. That's a big concern in the House with many of our folks, and I know some in the Senate. We need to get to a full two-year cycle so that we can have the long-term spending plan that our military needs to face the real world problems. I'm not sure how my friends across the aisle tonight can say that the United States is being honest with the real world problems of North Korea, Syria, and all around the world when they're not willing to come to a spending agreement. That's just boggling to me. So let's uh, turn to DACA, which uh, is really at the crux of what we're dealing with right now. Uh, Congressman Krishnamurthy, uh, where are you on the contours of what we're seeing from what appears to be the primary GOP offering in the House side from uh, House Judiciary Chairman Bob Goodlatte? Uh, it's pretty tough. I mean, it cuts down, uh, it eliminates chain migration and, and the visa lottery uh, eventually. It does provide some pathway to legal status and protection uh, for DACA, for the DREAMers. Um, but it's really tough on a number of levels. Is that something that there are portions of it, any of it, some of it, all of it, that you could get on board with? Um, I, I cannot support that particular measure. Um, I, 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 I'm a sponsor of the DREAM Act, uh, which I believe is a, is a much better uh, approach to treating the folks on DACA. Um, I agree with my good friend from Georgia, Mr. Collins, who says that we do need a multi-year budget to help the military, but also education and health care. We need to reauthorize community health centers, and we need to provide a fix for the DREAMers. You know, uh, some folks have claimed that this is not an emergency situation for the DREAMers. Uh, they're, uh, they're about to be subject to deportation in March in less than 60 days. Um, I think that's an emergency. Um, and we are funding 
uh, ICE, as well as uh, Customs and Border Patrol, as well as the Department of Home Homeland Security, precisely those functions that touch upon immigration and these particular issues. Uh, but that being said, let's come back to the table. Let's be, uh, uh, you know, let's be our best selves and let's come uh, uh, with open minds and open hearts and let's uh, be bipartisan about this. That's what I believe we, should ha we have to do. We have a duty to do at this point. Congressman Collins, hearing that, and it's nice to hear the two of you are, are friendly and very respectful to yes, each other. Yes, and it sounds like you, you want to find common ground here. But Congressman Collins, wh where are you on the Goodlatte bill? Where are you on what you're hearing from your colleague tonight? Well, I'm, I've, many of the parts of the Goodlatte bill we've actually already voted on in the Judiciary Committee. This is not a new bill. Many of these pieces together from uh, different things that have been already going through and in the process of discussing immigration. I, the only exception I take with my friend is this, is that the, the emergency, and he, he spoke of the emergency and the urgency with the DACA, why are we not speaking about the same urgency and, and, and concern about a military that is that can't get funding? Let's take it out of the CR context. Let's take it out of this continuing resolution context. When it was offered on the table for us to basically suspend the sequestration and to take away the cuts that would be coming to military. Well, what happened was is, is when they went to the table, instead of raising the discretionary spending and keeping it and removing the cuts from sequestration it and removing the cuts for sequestration on defense, what happened is our friends across the aisle wanted to raise the domestic spending up to the levels of the defense spending. I think these are big issues that are not being discussed and talked about because when I look at this, I look at the real world issues of our defense. I look at the, the training incidences. I look at the lack of manpower. I look at the same thing that General Mattis just talked about, that, that uh, psyche of what are we doing and are we being appreciated. So I think to me there's a bigger emergency in our side of our spending and looking at how we make a long-term solution here and work together. Yes, this is something that we can work together on, but there has been commitment to say we'll find a solution for the DACA uh, folks. We are wanting to make sure that they are taken care of, but we have to put priorities in line and one of the biggest priorities is what has not happened right now and that is not funding this government and not funding our troops. And I, uh, can I agree yes. with Mr. Uh, Collins on something? Yeah, we definitely, uh, your response, please. Yes, uh, you know, Mr. Collins brings up some excellent points with, with regard to the military, uh, but he also probably realizes that there's some emergencies uh, on, on some non-military matters as well. Um, you know, one-third of the non-defense discretionary budget is actually spent on security measures, everything from counterintelligence issues to homeland security and so forth. So, you know, we have to, you know, take care of our veterans as well. We have to take care of these non-defense measures just at the same time that we're taking care of these military matters and we have to do it in a way that's consistent with the values of the American people you know they're demanding a solution we got to come to the table right now you know it's 12:40 Eastern time I think we should go to the table right now I don't think there's sh we should delay um, and and we got to get to the work of the American people um, I should note that uh, one thing that we're doing in our office we're going to be open every day uh, of this shutdown I'm, I suspect many of my colleagues will also uh, have their offices open I'm donating my paycheck to, to local charities um, and, and I think on a bipartisan note I should note that we are also co-sponsoring bill I'm sure that Mr. Collins is on this bill to take care of military families uh, who may be affected by the shutdown right now um, so let's let's take that spirit let's go to the table Let's be bipartisan about it. Let's get a deal done ASAP, maybe as soon as tonight or tomorrow, and uh, let's get on with it. Well, the attitudes of both of you will give hope uh, to Americans at home who do want to see resolution, whether yes, they're from the right or the left side of the aisle. Uh, Congressman yes, Christian Morthy and Congressman Collins, we thank you both for your time and being with us late tonight.